Hey guys, Dan here with Hardly Brief Programming. This is episode 3 of our platform of tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at creating a couple of scripts. They're going to be two they're both are going to be C# -sharp scripts and we're going to be creating a creature class and ability class. Both both of these classes are going to be pretty simple. They're going to be base classes so that we can build off of them with inheritance uh, in the next upcoming videos, but we need to go ahead and get our base structure down first so that we can move on from there. As always, this project is available free to download off GitHub if you'd like to. Uh, the link is in the description below for you to go grab that. Uh, please feel free to add any comments or anything you'd like in the comments below too if there's some things that you'd like to see that hopefully we can add uh, as this series goes on. But let's go ahead and get started. I'm in the same project like I said. I'm in our project folder over here. Uh, right now the scripts folder is highlighted and we're going to create two scripts right now under create and then C sharp script. I'm going to go ahead and label one of these creature. The other one I'm going to label ability. Oh, I just created a new folder. We don't want that. Delete that. Create new C sharp class. It's going to be ability. I'm going to drag this and move it into our scripts folder like that. So we have the two there. I'm going to open these both up in the Visual Studio just by double clicking on them. You can see they opened up here. Uh, and I'm going to open. I'm going to shove the test script over all the way to the right. And I'm going to open up our creature class. So our creature class is going to be attached to our game objects within the game. So we're going to need model behavior for that. Uh, and we're going to need both of these. Well, we're going to need an awake method and probably the update method. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the comments here. Uh, and I'm going to change start to awake. Um, and I'll go ahead and talk about that in just a moment. But basically, the creature class is our base class for anything that our game uses that has health, right? So our player is a creature, our slime balls or whatever they're called are going to be creatures, and then our boss that we're going to create is also a creature. Uh, and having said that, the reason why we're doing that is because we want our code, we don't want to have to retype code, we want to be able to reuse it as much as possible. So we need to come up with a generic class, as generic as we can, that allows us to adjust and um, change all these things or allows us to type co the code once and not repeat it. Okay, having said all that, let's talk about some of the things that all these things are going to have in common. The first one I've already said is health. Everything in this game is going to have a little bit of health. Uh, they're going to have abilities, so we need to come up with a way to store those. If they're going to have an attack, attack method, a death method, and an idle method. Now these are probably more, you can call these states. And we're actually going to be creating uh, coroutines with these states. But as of now, we're going to go ahead and just call them methods. Uh, and we'll go into depth with more of those later and probably in the next episode. Uh, but today we're going to look at health and abilities more specifically. So health is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a private int. We're going to call it health. Just going to be an integer. The value of it doesn't matter at this point. We can adjust it. Uh, when we start testing out how it feels to to go through the levels and, and progress. Uh, but there is one thing I want to talk about with health. Uh, we want to be able to access health publicly uh, and not be able, but we don't want to set it. So we don't want to just label it as a public integer because then we can go ahead and set it willy nilly and we don't want to do that. So the way we handle that is we can create a public getter and a private setter or protected set. So we're going to say public int. We're going to call it health again, but we're going to use a capital H this time. We're going to say get, and we're going to return the private variable health. So whatever, when we call health with a capital H, when we call it get, we're going to actually be giving, getting a copy, if you will, of whatever's stored in this private, class, uh, private variable. Now we're going to go ahead and do a protected set. And this is going to restrict us, the programmer, or whoever's programming this game, uh, for, from setting the health variable through this public modifier. So we're going to say public, or pr excuse me, protected set health lowercase h is equal to value and a semicolon. And what this is going to do, I'm going to demonstrate real quick in the test uh, script. If I go to our test script here, again, you don't need to do this. This is just to show off what I'm talking about. I create a private int called h for health. And then in, uh, under our start method, I go and say creature which is the class we just created. We'll call it C. We'll set it equal to a new instance of it. And then we'll go at C.health, which will basically here we're calling our new 
uh, public getter here, and let's let's try to set it equal to something. So if I try to set it equal to 19, excuse the double semicolon, you'll see it's throwing an error here. And if I bring over our error list, you can see the property or index or creature health cannot be used in this context. Uh, and this is just telling us, hey, you can't do that. That is not a valid way to do that. So the reason why I created this private variable is you can actually say h. So if you do need that health for some reason, if you need to reference it some for some weird way, reason, you can say h is equal to creature, uh, excuse me, c dot health. And that way, now it's getting copied whatever that private variable health in the creature class has and it's storing it as h and you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, but what we want to do is actually create a public very uh, method that adjusts the health. So we are going to go ahead and say public void. This is a method. It's not going to return anything. You could set it to return a bool if it successfully adds a health, uh, but we don't need that in this case. So we're going to say public void, and we're going to call it adjust health. And this is actually going to take in an integer. And it's going to be called amount. Uh, and all we're going to do is add amount. So health plus equals amount. We're going to add the amount to health. And this is going to cover two scenarios. Uh, basically, if we add in 100, it will add 100 to their health. But if we add a negative 10 or negative 50, whatever, uh, it will also subtract health. So we'll handle both negative and positive. The only thing this will not do, and we can add a check, we can say if, this is probably good, we can do this now. If health is greater than zero, right, then we'll go ahead and add it. If not, then we're going to have to come up with something. Obviously, we don't know what our death is going to be yet, so we'll talk about that later. But we only want to add health in this case when we're greater than zero. Because at zero, you're dead. Presumably. If your project, you want that to be a little different, then you can go ahead and change it up. Uh, but that's what we'll do for now. Um, but what... We'll, now what we want to do is we want to look at abilities um, and the reason why we created the ability class up above is because we needed a way to reference abilities in our code here. So what we're going to do is actually in our ability class we're going to delete the model behavior. We don't need the model behavior inheritance. We're going to delete the start and update method here uh, and we are going to create a couple variables. Not much. We're going to make a private string name just because and then we're going to create a public virtual method. Uh, it's going to return void and it's going to be called use. So the reason why we're doing the virtual is because ability is going to be our base class. So when we create a, let's say slime ball ability, it's going to be slime ball is going to inherit ability. Right, ability can't determine what slime ball actually does. So therefore, ability uh, can't be as general, like it, it can say, hey, you're going to use the ability, but it can't dictate how that ability actually performs. So your logic, your ability logic, is going to be performed here. All right. So a couple of things that ability might have, it's going to have a name, of course. It's going to have a private variable int damage amount. Uh, we can come up with some, maybe a description, really anything you want. Uh, we're going to just use damage amount for now. It might have a timer or speed, something like that. Uh, but that will be more so when we get into these abilities, right? So for now, we'll go ahead and just name an, a string name, an integer damage amount, and use will be the virtual method that we're going to call. Uh, and again, if you've watched any part of the ability part of the Unity RPG series, this is going to be extremely familiar with you because we've done a lot of this before. Uh, but here we're just going to create a little bit more simple for this project because uh, it's a new project. So back to our creature class. We're going to create a list of abilities. If you know that all your creatures are only going to have one ability, then of course you don't need a list. You can just store it as one. Uh, but I want to have a couple, uh, I might want to have a couple of my creatures to have more than one ability. So we're going to use a list to do that. We're going to say using systems.collections.generic. It will give us access to the C Sharp uh, list. And we're going to go under the abilities comment here. I'm going to say private list ability is our type. And we're going to call it abilities. Um, and then in our awake method here, 
Uh, right now it's not. Well, we'll come back to that. But right now it's not initiated. Basically, this, this doesn't fully exist. You have to create the list uh, in some sort of a start function or a wake function. So when we build the enemy, when we turn the enemy on, it wakes up. Then we'll go ahead and create the ability list. Uh, but we wanted that so I can kind of talk about uh, what the attack and death idle will do. Uh, briefly, we're going to go into these more in depth in the next episode. But now that we have abilities and we have that on use or the, the use method, uh, then we can kind of talk about what attack is going to do. So attack, along with death and idle, they're going to be IE numerators. They're going to be coroutines that uh, we can call based on whatever uh, from idle. and ba They're basically states. Um, so if you watch any videos on state machines, I know I've talked about them before. Attack, death, and idle are basically states that this player is going to go from. Uh, and we're going to build the logic within it, uh, within the abilities. Most of our logic based on what the creature is going to do is going to be in the idle method. Uh, but we'll talk again, we'll talk about that more in the next video. I just want to kind of demonstrate what the attack is going to look like. So attack will be a public, virtual, right? We want to be able to edit attack maybe and up in more classes in like the next up class. So like the player that inherits creature might do something differently when it attacks. So we want to have the ability to do that. So we're going to make it virtual. We're going to make it a void. It doesn't return anything. It's going to be called attack. And it's going to, <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be IE numerator. So it's actually going to return something, but it would probably return null or wait a certain amount of time. Um, but it'll be public, virtual, IE numerator, attack. It's going to take an ability. So we're going to pass it in an ability, and we'll call it that ability AB. Uh, here we're going to say return null just to get the error to go away. And under attack, the only thing we're going to call is AB.use. So in the most general sense, the creature class could not care or does not care about what ability does, right? It doesn't care what the logic of a of an ability is. It doesn't care how it's used. It just knows that when I click the attack button or when the creature says, hey, I need to attack, it needs to use whatever ability is being passed into it, right? And that's what we're doing here. Obviously, it's an IE numerator, it's, and we're, we're, we are returning something, but this is so we can build off of it a little bit later and expand upon it. Uh, but this is the general setup for the attack, and again, death and idle are going to be extremely similar, uh, and of course we'll work more in the awake and the update method as we see fit. Uh, but that's all for this video. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, again, this is all available for you to download. The description for the GitHub page is down in the description below, and I'll talk to you guys next time.